How's it going guys and welcome to Form Our Ranch. Today I wanted to talk to you about IR illumination devices because I feel they can be somewhat easy to overlook yet they have a major influence on the experience you're going to have with your night vision devices. So both analog or digital night vision devices and as we know um, seems like night vision both on the analog as well as digital side are taking off in popularity. They're becoming more accessible, more widely used, more widely fielded. So I, I did want to share my two cents on the IR illumination tools that I currently have that I use for videos on the channel, both hunting or just nighttime plinking, etc. Now, what do we got on the table? We have a variety, like I mentioned, the price ranges vary. So on the lower end of the spectrum, go down to as low as a $40 IR illumination tool, all the way to what is going to represent our $2,000 plus dollar PEC 15 style laser. This is just a SOMO gear. Don't hate me guys. These are about $250 clones, but they're full power. I wanted something somewhat representative for this video without spending thousands of dollars. Uh, we also have the Sniper Hog Lights Coyote Cannon. You can pick these up for the mid 200, sometimes 300, depending on what comes with it. This is a Nightcore C17. I believe this is about a $100 IR illuminator. We have the Armasite Watchman, which is in the ballpark of $200 to $220. We have a Surefire Scout, the Vampire Light. These run anywhere from $350 to $450, depending on where you pick it up and what deals you see. And then we got something old school, the Surefire M952V, which I believe these have been out for a little bit, or close to a decade now. Guys, correct me in the comments. Um, these go on the secondhand market anywhere around the ballpark of $250. And then I also did just use a mod light just to also kind of give you guys a baseline in terms of a bright and well-established uh, white light just to compare what the night vision looks or what the night vision sees, um, you know, on the white light spectrum compared to the IR light spectrum. So I do want to go ahead and give you some context on what you're looking at for purposes of this video. You see a pond there, the front edge of the pond is roughly 75 yards, the back edge of the pond is going to be at right at 100 yards from where I'm filming. There is a steel silhouette on that rear bank of the pond. And then in the very background, that tree line is at 500 yards from the point of view of this Armasite Gen 3 PVS-14 that we're using in support of this video. So again, context so you know what you're looking at. Now, first up, we're going to be looking at the Evolva technology. Again, this is a $40 to $50 IR illuminator, at least at the time that I purchased it back in the day. So it does have a focusable beam. I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you the wide view first. As you can see, a lot of that flood is going to be in the foreground. Notice how the night vision really does clean up quite a bit. And that's what I stressed in the beginning, guys, that your experience with night vision is going to be completely dependent on how much ambient light or how much of an IR illumination source you have, especially if you're talking digital night vision. Digital leans pretty much 99% on that IR illumination. If you're relying on ambient, you're not going to like digital night vision at all. So now focusing the illuminator, you see that we get a little bit more punch and I will go ahead and toggle all the different power settings on the illuminators that we're testing. Bear with me, I'm out here trying to hold a camera in one hand and the illuminator in the other guys. I'm also gonna kind of pan the night vision around so that I don't leave lights in the background on one single point on the PVS-14 tube. So again, bear with me, trying to do the best I can here. And you can see that for a $40 IR illuminator, it does reach about 500 yards, but it really kind of falls off. Moving next is going to be the Nightcore C17. Now the C17 essentially has four white light or four IR LEDs. It is not focusable. It's basically a flood. So there are three different power settings. I'm going to toggle through that, but it really kind of lacks that punch. Now, if you want to use this for up close use, I think it's going to do pretty good. As you can see, that silhouette does kind of peek through a little bit at the 100 yard mark, which is fairly impressive considering that this is just a massive floodlight, for lack of a better way to put it. But I think that's probably the maximum range you can really count on for this. It is potentially a phenomenal handheld light for if you're going to do any kind of nighttime walking. I think that's where the C17 will really shine. But as far as a weapon mounted light, I think it's going to leave a little to be desired here. Next up, we have the Surefire lights. Now, first, I'm going to show you the older, but apparently still pretty relevant M952V. As you can see, you can now make out that silhouette at 100 yards. 
So it does do its job to 100 yards, but as I kind of aim a little upwards towards the tree line, it just doesn't seem to have the punch whatsoever. So switching now to the newer M600V, it looks like it has a little bit more of a hot spot possibly, but there's also some kind of gaps in that throw. So comparing the two side by side, um, I'm actually kind of inclined to enjoy the older M952V. Now, I don't know if this is just the sample that I currently have. It is a sample size of one. There's the newer one again, older one. The older one seems to have the same punch and more flood, whereas the newer M600V head just doesn't seem to look as good. Now, I did want to test the, again, representative full power PEC-15 style laser illuminator. This is at full power at a fairly focused beam. And I did go ahead and crank it out to 500 yards because it does do the job there. Angling now at what's going to be closer to about 800 yards. It also seems to kind of punch through the night. It falls off a little around that 800 yard mark, but it does still shine visibly just for comparison purposes again here is the full power laser as well as the full power illuminator and it's definitely almost overpowering at the 100 meter mark it pretty much washes out that target that is why they have the low power modes but again the whole point is just comparing power output on these so there is your again the illuminator and laser on low this time Hopefully that gives you guys a feel. So again, this is a $250 clone, but it is technically a full power laser and illuminator for comparison purposes. Next up is gonna be the Watchman IR. And this is probably one of my favorite out of the group because again, coming in around the $200 mark, I think dollar for dollar, this is probably one of the better performers of the group. So starting out on low power and the widest setting, you still do make out that silhouette at the 100 meter mark but similar to some of the other illuminators on this you can focus that beam you can make out much more that 100 meter or 100 yard silhouette as you can see here it does a pretty good job a little bit of throw there to the 500 yard trees but what really impresses me about this unit is that the beam is focusable down to three degrees so it almost becomes a laser in itself completely illuminating that 500 yard tree line to the extent that it's overpowering the PVS 14 tube, but you can dial it back out to the wider beam and adjust it for what you want to use it for. So that three degree beam is just incredible in terms of what it can punch through. And I'm gonna go ahead and pan over to that 800 yard angle and it's still completely illuminating that tree line to the extent that it's still overpowering the PVS-14 tube in the hotspot. So I would actually be a little bit wider if I was using this for hunting or target identification. But here's the cool thing, we were still on the low power setting. So now toggling to a higher power and widening that beam, you can see that you not only illuminate the foreground but the background extremely effectively. And when you condense to that three degree beam on high power it is just absolutely bright so this is definitely a thousand plus yard capable beam and right there it's pretty wide for five to six hundred yards at that angle and it's still completely able to overpower the night vision if if that's what you want to do so i would recommend obviously widening that beam so if you're going to try to do any kind of long range nighttime shooting, this would probably be my recommendation out of this group just based on how focusable that beam is as well as the overall form factor of this unit. I think it really kind of fits the bill. It's kind of the jack of all trades out of this bunch. Now, if we're talking just pure power output, here is the Sniper Hoglites Coyote Cannon, which is the most powerful, at least to my eye, out of this group. So here is the lowest setting and the widest beam. It is similar to the Watchman in this regards in terms of how much output there is, but again, you can focus this beam. It's not quite as clean of a beam as the Watchman. You see that LED chip um, outline, which is very, very common for IR illuminators, but it is still pretty decent at illuminating 500 yards on the low setting. But similar to the previous illuminators, you can really crank it 
and that is a much larger overpowering hotspot. So I'm not changing settings on what I'm recording, I'm trying to give you guys a one-to-one -one comparison, but this thing is an absolute monster in terms of output, but it's also kind of a monster in terms of form factor. So you do need to keep that in mind. There is a trade-off here. If you want the absolute most output, this is probably the illuminator I would recommend, but it is gonna cost you in terms of size and weight on your rifle. You can definitely use this illuminator to illuminate a very large area at a very far distance. It really excels in this regard. Now, I was really curious to compare the Watchman IR, which is gonna be on the right, and the Coyote Cannon on the left. They are pretty close in power output when you adjust them to roughly the same beam focusing size with the sniper hog lights appearing to my eye to have a little bit more output. It might also be a potential illusion as the PVS 14's auto gating might be kicking in from all this IR throw going down range and it's probably focusing on the brighter of the two, which is the sniper hog lights, but they are pretty similar. Now notice the sniper hog lights when more focus is a much more squared off throw, whereas the watchman has a more rounded and uniform beam. Whether that bothers you or matters to you, I'm not sure, but just pointing out the obvious here. Now, the Watchman IR, again, can focus substantially more, which I'm showing here just to kind of remind you what that throw looks like, backing it out, and gonna go ahead and try to get that sniper hog lights to a similar throw pattern. Now, comparing the little bit wider beams, it appears that the sniper hog lights is substantially brighter, but I want to point out that in the earlier clip where it was just the Watchman by itself, it was completely illuminating and overpowering the PVS-14. My guess is the PVS-14 is now making internal adjustments for the brighter of the two, but this still does kind of demonstrate the brightness difference of these two units. So if you want the maximum possible output, it looks like the Sniper Hog Lights Coyote Cannon is still the one to go with. Nonetheless, the Watchman, which right there by itself, still completely illuminates, is more than enough to make the nighttime look like the daytime. But again, just giving you guys some comparisons here so you can make a decision on what IR device might be best suited for your needs. And no surprise here that even at the 800 yard range, they are still more than capable of overpowering the night vision when the beam is focused. So very, very impressive IR illuminators. I think either of these is more than suitable for any kind of long range nighttime target identification or plinking. Now, you can see all the dust in the air when I'm doing this, which I only point out so that you know these are punching through all that dust in the dry, windy night I was filming this in. I mentioned wanting to test some white light, so the last thing I'm gonna showcase here, just for another data point, is gonna be the Surefire M600V. This is the white light throw. You'll notice it does do a very good job at making the everything light up as you'd expect, especially through sensitive analog night vision. So it's gonna do pretty good compared to an IR illuminator with the obvious caveat that it's going to completely give away your position. Not gonna be a great tool for hunting. Definitely not a stealthy target identifier for nighttime use, but wanted to show you what white light looks like through night vision, just as a quick data point. And the last, but definitely not least data point is going to be the ModLite PLHV2 has a little bit more focused beam. This is kind of my preferred and go-to white light on my rifle. It has a pretty good hot spot with definitely some decent flood, and it does punch out pretty decently as seen through analog night vision. So just some data points. I was also kind of curious for myself. Hopefully this was insightful to anyone looking into any kind of nighttime illumination tools. Some more details on the, the lights shown and illuminators to follow if you are still interested in hanging around. Now the Surefire Scout series, their Vampire series in particular, is a pretty handy device because of the fact that you can use both a white head and then you can switch it over to IR as well, which you're not gonna be able to see through this camera, but it is actually throwing that IR light as well. So pretty useful light. It is powered by two CR123 batteries. The white mode is a 350 lumen beam and the IR is I believe 120 milliwatt. 
So all in all, a pretty handy and very compact device. Now where this is gonna lack is that since it's trying to satisfy two use cases, it's not gonna be as bright on the white spectrum as something like this mod light here. And as well as the IR side, it's not gonna have nearly the power of the dedicated IR devices in this video. So it's kind of jack of all trades, master of none, but you get the surefire durability, reliability, and their reputation, etc. And it is a little bit cleaner in the mounting systems that are available. You don't have to use generic mounts for something like this. Now, similar logic with the Surefire M952V. It's just an older version of the more updated variants, but you do once again have a rotatable head that can go from white light to IR. So once again, pretty handy. So again, jack of all trades, master of none, but this light just, again, goes to show the Surefire reputation. This is about a 10 year old light, probably a little older. I've personally owned this light for about five or six years, still growing strong and actually holds up quite well on both the white and IR side of the house to the newer version of these kind of dual lights from Surefire. Now, somewhat similar to the Surefire, actually very similar, except it has four LEDs rather than just the two but the Nightcore C17 has a rotating head and it simply just goes from those IR to white, but it's just, uh, they tried to multiply it times four. So in my opinion, the C17, um, it's really, really good for up close, but just the way that these uh, reflectors are shaped, potentially it just, it's very, very much a floodlight. I mean, you have four flood LEDs and it just, the spill is just everywhere. It does great up close, but really lacks the punch to reach out further. It does have a series of powers though that are controlled via the back switch. It does have a strobe function, but you can cycle different powers on both the white light spectrum as well as the IR spectrum. So pretty nifty in that regard. But again, I would really only recommend it for super up close use, not anything uh, far range for hunting. So here we have uh, Old Faithful. This thing's been getting beat up for about 10 years. This is the Evolva technology. I don't even know if it's still available. I will have a link in the description below if it is, but this is an 18650 powered IR light. It's pretty much representative of all the budget IR illuminators out there. The head you can see is focusable by rotating, which kind of locked up now over the years after being beat around, simply just rotates like such standard clicky cap on the back that unscrews and allows you to put that 18650 battery in. You can see I didn't even give it a really high quality mount, about a $10 probably airsoft mount with some electric tape to tighten it up a little bit, make it not rattle around in there, but it's still going strong. And again, really wanted to show you this because it's a $40 option versus several hundred dollars. So some of you guys just wanting to get started out in my opinion, it at least at the time, it was an upgrade to the stock IR illuminators that come with most digital night vision devices. So that's why I picked it up, especially the rechargeability. Um, it'll make your money back with rechargeables, rechargeable batteries that is. But uh, yeah, so just wanted to throw that out there for you guys to take a look at. And speaking of budget and knockoff, uh, this is the Somo gear. So it is a um, quote unquote full power uh, device. And I mean, it is it is pretty stupid bright. I mean, it just is. It's very, very powerful, um, visible and IR lasers. In fact, up close, I get kind of worried using this with analog night vision. I'm worried about burning the, the image intensifiers just because it is so strong. But again, point of it being in the video is just to kind of give you some sample footage of that. So for those that don't know, the PEC-15 style um, optics, you have a, uh, a visible laser, an IR laser, and then essentially a focusable illuminator. Now where these budget ones fall behind, although this one is quite powerful, the um, illuminator, or sorry, yeah, the illuminator is somewhat limited in what you can focus it on. And 
the lasers aren't necessarily always perfectly co-lined, although I got very lucky on my unit. It is very much co-lined, allowing you to zero with the visible laser and not need to zero uh, on the IR spectrum. You just simply activate it with the push switch. It also does have a receptacle for using remote switches, which is a nice feature. So this is powered by a single CR123 battery, so it's not gonna have the um, battery life that some of the 18650 rechargeable variants that we're talking about on this video will. But on all, 250 bucks, I don't think you can go wrong. Some people get several thousand rounds out of these. Some people claim they break between the 500 and 1000 round mark. Either way, you're spending $250 and not $2,500. In my opinion, it may be worth the gamble, but you do you guys. This here is the Armasite Watchman, and it is probably one of my more preferred IR illumination tools right now. Now, it's admittedly not as sexy as something like a, you know, Surefire, at least, you know, that's personal opinion. It looks a little bit more kind of like this Evolva Technologies, and maybe that's where I'm prejudiced against it. It doesn't look like it's as high quality as it is, but this thing is so impressive in what it can do because it can focus almost as narrow as a laser, but can also go extremely wide uh, as a floodlight. So to do so, it's kind of opposite of that Evolvo one. You just twist and it expands there, which I guess that's really my only complaint on this unit. It would be nice if you could just rotate the head itself and not change the position of the uh, tail cap, which it does come with both the clicky and as well as a pressure pad. Uh, I like this one enough that I'm actually gonna do a dedicated review on it. So if you're interested, uh, I will have a link in the description below, depending on the time you're watching this, that video may be ready for you. But they have put a lot of work into getting this lens just right to really, really project that um, LED light. I mean, it, it, like I said, it is like an absolute laser on the focused end and can go super wide and it makes it brighter than the sun, it seems, when looking through night vision devices. So uh, it's made really, really well. I like it a lot. Last but definitely not least is the Coyote Cannon by Sniper Hog Lights. It is the most powerful IR illumination tool that I currently have to date. Although the Watchman gets very, very close to this one, I still think this one has more power output. But the obvious downside is the absolute massive size. And that's really showing you worst case. Um, it doesn't have a clicky cap. It actually has a kind of a dial that does have a click on the back. So hopefully you're hearing that, but it clicks when it first activates and then you just dial it up or down. It doesn't take 18650 batteries, it actually takes a larger battery, so it does use proprietary batteries, which may or may not be a big deal to you, but it uses a 21700 battery. So, both wider in diameter and longer than an 18650 battery, but when you use it, you'll see why, because this thing is an absolute spotlight and will enable you to see over a thousand yards with even a digital night vision. Granted, at a thousand yards at night, I don't think you're gonna really be able to positively identify things, but you will illuminate them. That is a fact, this thing can do it. Again, at the sacrifice of size and weight. So depending on what's most important to you, this may be a very good option. But again, for the mid 200s, I mean, this will absolutely blow something like a PEC-15 out of the water, in my humble opinion. But, you know, this is tactical application, whereas the Sniper Hog Lights is definitely more marketed for the average hunter, which I'm assuming most people watching this video are. So there you have it, guys. I hope that this video was uh, informative, possibly entertaining. You let me know if there's anything else you want to dive deeper into regarding these kind of devices. I'd be happy to help shed some light, pun somewhat intended on that. Guys, like this video, subscribe if you haven't. It really helps support the channel. I will have affiliate links to these devices in the description below if you are interested in also supporting the channel at no additional cost to you if you are already set on purchasing one of these devices. I do want to thank you for taking the time to stop by the 4 Ranch channel. And as always, guys, have a good one.